So Wendy responded to my video on walrus and uh, water baby. She's got a really sad story. So I'm just kind of relaying this to you. And uh, she's had, had a rough time because it's been a year ago and she just now is able to talk about it. So I feel sorry for you, Wendy. But I, but I think it's good that you hear other people's problems because it gives you an opportunity to be aware of what can go wrong and uh, maybe do something a little bit different. So what happened to her? So she had a litter that was diagnosed as being all walrus puppies, all water babies in an x-ray, I think probably two weeks or 10 days before potential due date. And then they said that they put her on water tablets. So I'm assuming that that maybe is Lasix, which sounds sensible. Then what happened was not much happened. Every time she went back, they did a progesterone test, but nobody really paid much attention, I think, to her, her girl. And she said her girl looked huge. Her boobs looked like water balloons. I mean, there was obviously something bad going on with this, going on with this dog. Um, so the short, the short answer on this is what happened was when she went in for the scheduled due date, they said, oh, she's going to have these puppies taken out immediately. They got prepped up for that and they called her up 25 minutes later to say the dog had died of a massive heart attack before they even got to start the C-section or even got to an, uh, administer anesthesia. Um, and that uh, I guess some puppies had actually uh, split open inside the uterus and presumably it caused a huge infection. And that's what got her in trouble. <clears throat> so what would, what would have been helpful? Again, this is all, you know, Everybody's got 2020 vision after the fact, right? So this is not saying that Wendy is the cause of this or anybody else is. It's just, you know, obviously there's nobody is the cause of the dog getting in trouble. The question would be is what would you do if you thought that your dog was blowing up and you had been diagnosed that you had water puppies? Well, the first thing I would be doing is taking the dog's temperature because I suspect that dog probably had an elevated temperature to show that it had a raging infection going on inside the dog because um, there were seven puppies, two of them ended up surviving, but if seven puppies, five were dead, two of them are split open. If you get in a situation where a puppy ruptures its, uh, well, if you, get a, if you get in a situation where a puppy dies in utero, that can cause early labor, it can cause an infection inside the dog, it can cause septicemia, and it can be the loss of the dog. Uh, even worse if it ruptures and now all of that fluid material that's going bad inside the uterus is not self-contained inside an embryonic sac, even worse. And so I suspect that the dog would have a high white blood count, a uh, high temperature, and that would be an indication of something. And then also this dog's got these huge swollen balloon-like boobs. You know, something's going on here and you need to start taking an action. And you know, if that dog had a high fever, then I mean, maybe some antibiotics for a bit, and if not, maybe you bought the pregnancy right there and then, because what ended up happening was she lost her dog, which was, you know, her, her beloved dog, and she's very upset about it and can't talk about it until a year later. So a really sad situation, and I'm very sorry for Wendy that happened, and certainly we don't want to point a finger at anybody, and especially at Wendy. Wendy's obviously devastated by the whole thing, but I mean, the point here is, remember that when you go to the vet, they get about one minute to decide what the situation is. You've had a long time. You've got to make sure, don't get in a situation where you are mistakenly thinking that um, the vet knows everything. They probably know more than you. You'd hope so, that's why you're there, right? But remember, you've got to give them all the information. And if you don't like what you're being told, ask questions. And if they won't ask the, answer the questions in a manner that satisfies you, or they just won't answer the questions at all, go somewhere else. That's it. So somebody else is asking, uh, I think the Life of Riley is asking about um, um, shipping semen to Australia, frozen semen to Australia. And they want to know what company to use for this. And the answer is, I don't know. But let's just talk a little bit about what's going on here and why this is not run-of-the-mill stuff. To ship to Australia, it is a rabies-free country, and so it requires special uh, procedures to get it done. You have to have your dog tested by a certified vet for various different illnesses, including rabies, and they have to sign off on it. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is this semen is shipped in a vapor canister with liquid nitrogen at 181 degrees below zero, 
that shipment is in a big box, it's expensive, and the shipment can last 10 days. That's why it has to be frozen. You can't do ch ch chilled semen. I have a, a frozen, sh um, I have a nitrogen tank, and I've been playing around with this because I wanted to see whether or not I could fix this problem. So we didn't have to do this through frozen semen, we could do it through chilled. And I think we can do it, but the problem for me getting this done is, it's just too much work. The, getting all the certification in place and all that stuff, um, it, it was it's one of those things, it was gonna take a lot of my time, and I didn't have a, a, a clientele of people who wanted to use my dogs in Australia, and it just, it was beyond the amount of effort that I was prepared to spend on it. But if you're gonna do this, you're gonna have to get hooked up with, it's not an easy process. And presumably the way you'd get this done is that you get hooked up with somebody who does this on a regular basis, and they're gonna ship your straws along with straws from other people, and they're gonna send 20, 30, 40, 50 samples over in one vapor box to make this thing not cost prohibitive. So I can't tell you much more about it than that, um, but um, I got a person I was talking to two years ago, if I can find their name, I'll put it up here. I think her name is Kelly. Um, I'll look and see if I can find a number. If I can, I'll, I'll, I'll text that to that person. Um, and the last one somebody's asking about is, ARC asks, ARC asks, what are the boundary limits for progesterone levels for doing a mating? I.e. what is the lowest that will work and what is the highest that will work? So this depends on the machines that you're using. We're going to assume, we're going to talk about three different machines, IDEX, Fine Care and uh, Mini Vitus. So let's talk about IDEX first. On an IDEX machine, you think that you want to do your first breeding around a 15. If you're doing a TCI or a surgical, you want to do a breeding around a 25, which would be a day later. The day before a 15 on an IDEX would be an eight. So the boundary points are something around 12 through a, for a vaginal, 12 through a 25. That's your region of workable. And that range is about a day and a half on levels of progesterone rising. If you want to equate that to a fine care machine, that'd be something Fine care optimum would be a 17 to a 22, so the range on that is maybe something around a 15 to a 25 on a fine care machine. On a mini vitus, it's considerably more. I don't have the chart in front of me, but on a mini vitus, optimum time to breed is about a 28. So optimum times to breed on a mini vitus are something between a 20 and a maybe a 35, something like that. And remember, you're going TCIs and surgicals a day later, so those numbers are going to go up about another 70%. What those numbers equate to in Europe, well, in, in America, we measure things in nanograms per milliliter as versus nanomoles per liter in Europe. And to equate those two numbers, you have to multiply by 3.18. So where you are 15 on IDEX in America, you multiply by 3.18, which gets you to something around a 50 in, um, in, um, in Europe. So I hope that answers your question. And there we go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you got some good information out of it. I hope you subscribe to our channel. Brought to you by mybreedersupply.com. We've been in business for over eight years. We manufacture products to help you have successful breedings, successful whelps, and successful puppies. We've introduced a new subscription service, canineconnect.com. It's a one-year subscription for 129 bucks. And for that, you get two-day free shipping on all, all of your orders. You get 5% off your every order that you place, and you get direct access to our support line to help you with products that you buy from us and general questions about breeding your dogs. It's really a great deal. I hope you subscribe to that. Now the disclaimer. I'm not a licensed veterinarian. I'm not a professional health giver, but I am a guy that's been breeding dogs successfully for over 20 years. Any information you get from my videos is purely at your own risk, if you have any doubts about any of this stuff, you should definitely seek the help of a licensed professional. Again, thanks for watching. Have fun with your doggies. Bye, buddy. Mm -hmm.